G'day chaps, it's I, Clompatcher139. In case you didn't notice from the hundreds of notifications cluttering up your inbox, I've recently started streaming here on YouTube. After a quick test stream of playing Arkham City to make sure nothing would explode, I made it my mission to start streaming my challenge runs for the world to see, so you all can laugh at my suffering in real time. Naturally, the first challenge I undertook was one that isn't even self-imposed, but actually built into the game as one final test of strength. I am the Knight from Batman Arkham Origins. For those out of the loop, I am the Knight is the hard mode's hard mode for Arkham Origins. It's the same difficulty as New Game Plus, all enemies deal a lot more damage and take a lot more hits, there's no counter indicators, a lot of guys now have armor, stuff like that. Except there's one new twist. If you die once, that's it. You have to start the entire game over from the very beginning. I looked this challenge right in the face and said, Come on, it can't be that bad, right? Oh, how naive I was. Come along with both past and present me as I walk you through the incredible three-day journey that was beating I Am The Night. But before I tell you about my pain and suffering, I need to tell you about someone trying to do the opposite. The sponsor of this video, Under Lucky Stars. The night sky is something we all love gazing up into, but have you ever wondered what it looked like in the past? Some special moment in time that you couldn't get a picture of? Well, that's where Under Lucky Stars comes in. They create star maps of moments in time that are special to you. It could be the day you were born, or an anniversary for your special someone, or something in between. As long as you consider it a special day, Under Lucky Stars will get a snapshot of the night sky at that place and time and send it to you. It makes a fantastic gift for those aforementioned special occasions that your loved ones will absolutely adore. And your map is well and truly your own, with tons of customizable features you're sure to love. All their maps are NASA certified and even ship globally so you won't be alienated no matter where in the world you're watching this video. If any of those quick facts even slightly piqued your interest and you want to pick one of these maps up for yourself, you can follow my link in the description or pinned comment to get 10% off your order and help support my channel. Thanks to Underlucky Stars for sponsoring, but now let's finally get to the hardest challenge I've ever beaten. Something you'll immediately notice is that I have no resetting in big bold letters at the bottom of my stream. That's because a lot of people find this mode really easy to do one small exploit. If you're ever close to dying, you can just reload your checkpoint and restart the encounter with all your health back. Meaning, you can just cheese your way to victory and never even encounter the challenge this mode proposes. I didn't like that. So, I wasn't doing it. No matter how painful the upcoming loss might have been, I wasn't going to do it. If I was ever going to die, I would just have to accept it. I was not going to reset to make my life easier, because at that rate, I'm just playing New Game Plus, and that wouldn't make for a very interesting video, now would it? If I died, I had to take it. And as it turns out, take it I would. This challenge has five major roadblocks I would need to overcome, all of which essentially serve as checkpoints for me to track my progress, and points where I would need to relearn how to breathe. I'll cover each of those points as they come up, but for now, let's see how my first run went. As you'd expect, it started in the Blackgate Riots, but since this is New Game Plus, you have all the upgrades unlocked from the base game, turning just about every encounter into a complete joke. You'll be seeing me make use of the multi-ground takedown a lot in this challenge, because frankly, it is just flat out broken. That isn't to say Blackgate is free though, we still have a fight against Killer Croc on the roof. But aside from some carpool tunnel from all the button mashing, this fight isn't too bad. This allows us to head into Gotham proper and take on our first predator section. But since this one is so heavily scripted, we don't worry about it and can start our glide to Jezebel Plaza. In stopping the weapons deal, the multi-ground takedown comes in clutch once again and destroys everybody in seconds, further showing just how useful this tool will be and how much I'm going to be abusing the hell out of it. A few quick side objectives later and we reach the final offer, otherwise known as our first real Predator section. Oh, what the frick? No! How? I was behind cover! Or in other words for me, Heart Attack Central. Because I ended up being seen and shot to hell, meaning the enemies went to different locations than I'm used to, making it much harder to take them down. 
I was thankfully able to take all of them out, but not before being brought to 1 HP and left hyperventilating for minutes after the fact. This was my awakening moment that I could in fact die at any moment, and I needed to start playing a lot more careful. And nowhere is this better shown than our first major roadblock. Alright, hardest boss. You guys ready? I don't think I can do this. I'm not. A bird just in my window. Heart's racing, man. I'm not ready for this. Get back here. Stop running away from me, man. Stop running away. Get back here. Guys, ready? Here we go. Oh, it worked. Oh, thank God. I was not ready for this. Okay, bad joke is bad. The real roadblock isn't for another half an hour. Though, this combat section following him shouldn't be taken lightly. It's got all kinds of difficult enemies to deal with, from armored enemies to ninjas. Throw in all kinds of weapons for them to use as well, and you're dealing with absolute chaos. While I took a good amount of damage in this fight, in the end I was perfectly fine and could move on. The final offer is filled with dangerous sections, all of them combat no less. And they all just so happen to be in the casino too. This section is incredibly dangerous, and incredibly difficult because it's an onslaught of the most difficult enemies in the game back to back to back, all culminating in a fight against multiple armored guys and a brute. Thankfully, the bat swarm tech we used against Mr. Hammer in Arkham City works just as well here. Just spam the attack button, and when it looks like you're about to be attacked back, use the bat swarm to get everyone off of you. Unfortunately, you'll still be left with a bunch of regular enemies, some of which decide it's a great idea to grab guns, so keep that in mind before you rely on spam tech. After that brutal display of power, we have thankfully easy predator section before we could confront Penguin. Alrighty. Deathstroke time. Something that may surprise you at its lack of difficulty, that we actually don't consider a roadblock, is our next boss, Deathstroke. Deathstroke is normally one of the toughest bosses for this early in the game, but when you're fighting him on New Game Plus, he's a complete pushover. The reason being that a regular early game against him leaves you with no upgrades, because let's be real, the Origins upgrade system is horrible. But on New Game Plus, you have so many tools to absolutely humiliate him with. Most notably, critical strikes, special combo boost, and double combo attacks. Meaning after achieving a very small combo with help from the back claw and well-timed critical strikes, you can unleash takedown after takedown and obliterate his health bar. This is especially the case between phases, where you get a free double-digit combo after beating him down, meaning you have two completely free takedowns to use against him. This meant that I rarely had to counter any of his attacks, and even when I did, I had so much health that it didn't even matter when I failed them. Slade had gone from one of the most difficult and terrifying fights in the game to a completely free fight I never had to worry about. In other words, if you want the actual hardest Slade experience, fight him on hard mode. What? Um, hello? Do you guys see that? I just tried to use the back claw, but he just did that. I hope that doesn't break anything. With that, we came to the actual first major roadblock of this challenge the GCPD. It doesn't seem like it at a glance, but this is one of the most terrifying gauntlets of the game, and it all starts with the hardest predator section in the game just outside. There's nowhere to hide, nowhere you can get takedowns, and you have no gadgets at this point in the game. It's all waiting for your opportunity to snatch a silent takedown or two when nobody's looking and hoping to whatever god you may believe in that you don't get shot. Because unless you have the patience of Gandhi, you will not be able to avoid getting shot at one point or another. Oh crap, 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 crap. That's not good. Oh crap. That was not ideal. Thankfully, it only took two heart attacks to make it through, and the rest wasn't nearly as bad. 
I was able to get past all the combat sections rather easily until we came to the one predator encounter. It's not the worst thing in the world, but there are a lot of armored guys, meaning I can't rely solely on cheese to take them down. Now, yes, I was able to get four enemies without even leaving the vantage points thanks to the remote claw shenanigans, but my point still stands. Besides, next up is the disruptor section. We've got two back-to-back, -back incredibly difficult combat encounters in the holding cells. First with the officers, then again with some of the toughest thugs in the game, including a Venom user, which just made me hate everything. But for this run, it worked out pretty well, and I barely lost any health, so we can go ahead and move on. That victory let me waltz through the rest of the PD without any issues, aside from taking a stupidly long time against Brandon for some reason. This will be a running theme. But it let me finally exit and move on. Unfortunately, it let me move on to the sewers, which was such a freebie I don't even need to talk about it. I'm punching your culturally appropriate British culture every time you open a vid, stop being xenophobic racist. Uh, British people aren't real, so that's not true. But victory over that let me head over to Gotham Merchants Bank for a twist reveal I skipped because time loss and another predator section. This one isn't too bad even though it starts with a jammer and quite a few armored guys. You can take out the jammer for free on the stairs, then just work your way around the room to pick off the rest. It's really not all too bad. That said, I did have one heart attack moment where I walked over a mine while going to interrogate the last guy, and if I had died to that, I would have game overed in real life. Thankfully, I had all my health, so could once again move on to the steel mill. Oh, it's just this? Oh. That helps out a lot. Oh my god. Where did you come from? Overall, it wasn't too bad. The combat section was a little scary, but since I had the bat swarm tech in mind from earlier, I was able to get the brute down no problem. After that was just another predator section, and... Oh, no. We're confronted with another difficult predator section, made even harder by the inclusion of a jammer that we can't get rid of. In other words, we have to take all these guys down in a no detective mode challenge. I, I don't like that. Especially since there's multiple armored guys, one of which has a goddamn sniper rifle. I'm still eventually able to get them all down with a combination of remote claw shenanigans and occasionally leaving my post to get on the ground, but I try my best to avoid it since there's a sniper with armor who I'd really like to avoid pissing off as much as possible. But I'm eventually able to get them all down and can move on to the second roadblock of this run, Copperhead. While a long trek through the mill is nothing special, the fight is one of the most dangerous, since it's a giant horde battle against what are essentially all ninjas. Now, yes, you can take them all down in one shot with critical strikes, but since there's so many of them, you never know when they're gonna attack, let alone change up their attacks into a blade swipe just for the hell of it. Thankfully though, there are some safe strats to employ to make this fight much more manageable. Most notable among them is using the concussion detonator to instantly delete any of Copperhead's clones. That's right, this gadget isn't completely useless. If it blows up on one of the fake Copperheads, then that clone and any clones in a small area of the explosion will instantly be defeated. It's incredibly useful and incredibly safe since you can just run away while you wait for it to blow up. This makes the first two phases far more manageable. The third is all about survival, as Copperhead will only send in three clones at a time, which can usually be taken down with some well-placed explosive gel, meaning you don't even have to get that close to them. I still got way too close to dying at the end, but I was able to scrape through and win the fight. Let's see, that's uh, five heart attacks so far this run? I could take a couple more. Is that the end? Thank God. That let me head off to the next major area, the Gotham Royal Hotel. Bad idea, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And there wasn't all too much to talk about here. Just kind of the usual stuff. Difficult combat, difficult predator, nothing too out of the ordinary or super noteworthy. Aside, of course, from picking up the Shock Gloves, the most overpowered gadget in Arkham history. Which we will barely see getting used throughout this run. The problem is that I can usually finish combat before they even have time to charge, and the few times that isn't the case, it's on a super difficult combat encounter that would have been nearly impossible without them otherwise. Take for instance this brood in Joker's Carnival. I wasn't going to beat this guy and all the other loose ends without the shock gloves, so I just waited for them to charge and unleash electric hell on them shortly after. 
They kind of trivialize the whole hotel when you can actually use them. At least until we get to the Predator section at the top. This run though, they weren't all too bad. The thugs pretty much all cooperated with me until they armed the gargoyles, which forced me into the ground. But even then, I was eventually able to get them all. Leading me to my ultimate demise. The third major roadblock for this challenge, and what I considered the absolute hardest roadblock to overcome, was Bane in the Gotham Royal Hotel. I consider this to be the hardest boss fight in the Arkham Saga, and anyone else who's attempted I Am The Knight or even New Game Plus should understand why. It's incredibly inconsistent and requires precise, on-the-fly thinking to ensure you don't die. And even then, you could still get unlucky and die just due to plain bad luck. I played the first phase incredibly safe. I didn't bother trying to counter or beat on him regularly with chip damage. I vaulted behind him, used a super stun, then a beatdown and combo takedown to instantly send him to phase 2, also known as the Venom phase. Same thing happened here though. I vaulted behind him, used a super stun, and got a combo takedown to make him vulnerable again. Rinse and repeat, only taking a small hit in the process to reach phase 3, also known as the Bane Train. Woo, woo. If you've played this game, you know the Bane Train very well. It is arguably the hardest attack to dodge in the whole series, and more often than not, getting hit by it once means you're gonna get hit a whole lot of other times. And that was absolutely the case with this run. I lost so much health throughout this fight from both the Bane Train and the various enemies that decided to drop in. Every time I tried getting away, they'd end up comboing me down. And when you combine all those hits with the multi-damage attacks from Bane that can take away so much health in a single hit, my end was sure to come. But I still had hope. I had taken away all of Bane's health. I just needed to survive one more Bane train. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> sent back to the title screen, and would have to do the whole thing again. I was incredibly sad at this turn of events, though I knew it happening at least once was inevitable. I still had some energy left in me though, so I went ahead and started again. This run started out pretty much the same as the previous, except with me playing a lot more carefully overall. I got through Blackgate without any issues, took out the weapons dealers quite easily, and once again made it to the final offer. This time I did the section correctly and didn't get shot, so that was a much needed bonus. The ship itself played out basically the same. The combat sections in the casino were the toughest part, while Deathstroke was a complete pushover. I once again made it to Lacey Towers and sat through a 5 minute interactive cutscene before heading back to the Batcave and on to the GCPD. Little did I know how much Origins jank would ruin this run. Hollywood has tried adapting over the years. What the fuck? Where's my smoke pellet? Hello? What the fuck was that?! I made it back to the rooftops and was just about to start taking out the snipers when they suddenly decided to spin bot me and delete my health bar in seconds. In retrospect, it's because I ran, so this guy heard me. I still called Jank though, because the game never let me throw down a smoke bomb, which would have absolutely saved my skin if it ever came out. But the game decided I had enough for one day and end my run only an hour in. At this point, I was tired of playing the early game so much, but wanted to keep streaming for a bit, so I just played through Cold Cold Heart to get my mind off it, and decided to come back the next day. Day 2, Attempt 3 started the same as the previous one, but like the last run, I was being far more careful overall, and generally left encounters with a lot more health. In fact, the non-roadblock that is Deathstroke ended with me at full health, the very first time I've achieved that feat gaining me a new achievement. So that's pretty cool. The rest of the game played out pretty much completely as normal, nothing substantial to note aside from a few difficult encounters you'd expect, until I eventually made it back to the hotel and once again had to fight Bane. I was just as nervous as the first time, but was able to come in with a safer strategy. 
I didn't want to rely on it if I didn't have to, but desperate times were calling for desperate measures. I needed to win this run, so implemented a new tactic against the Bane Train. Okay, so I did learn from speedruns that you can just run to avoid Bane's charge. I don't like that it's kind of cheesy, but I frankly do not want to die again, so yeah, I'm just kind of accepting that I'm going to do the cheese. Rather than try to play chicken with the charge, I would instead listen to Bane's advice and run for my life. Running from Bane during the charge is a perfectly viable strategy if you aren't surrounded by thugs, and is much more reliable than trying to dodge last second. And despite how low my elf ended up again during this fight, I was able to clutch out a win, letting me finally progress after two and a half hours. Just calm down. Okay. Final phase. Just calm down. You know what to do, just run. Literally just listen to Bane, run for your life. I just hate that the camera doesn't follow him, man. Oh my god, my heart, man. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm just... I'm letting this play out. I need a minute to calm down, dude. Now we enter Bane's Lair, an incredibly short but still decently dangerous section due to the number of Venom users. But since I was still riding the high that was my victory against Bane, I was pretty confident. They may have frazzled me up a bit, but I was able to take them all down and make progress. Besides, they aren't really a roadblock in the grand scheme of things. That comes next. The fourth roadblock was upon us, and it was a doozy. It's time for the Gotham Pioneers Bridge, and Firefly. The bridge itself is mostly a non-issue. Aside from a decently difficult combat section near the end, the only thing I had to worry about was my heart giving out when I fell during the climbing section under the bridge and couldn't grapple onto anything. Thankfully, I was eventually allowed to grapple, saving my run. That said, I did have one more stupidly close call in the second Predator section in the depot. This one is just so incredibly stupid, and I hate how they designed it. So first off, there's a jammer, meaning you can't see where anyone is. That wouldn't be too bad, jammers are everywhere in this mode. But the second problem is that they place an enemy that looks directly into the doorway you're supposed to enter through, meaning you can't execute the normal strategy to get into this room. Because you'll immediately get seen and shot when trying to go in. This is honestly the meanest thing they added to New Game Plus, and I still don't know why they did it. Just to screw with us? Point being, I got shot and had to retreat out of the room. Thankfully, there's some grates and cover just outside, so I could eventually take all these guys down. I just had to wait for them all to funnel out, and then I could get them. I didn't end up on super low health and even knocked one of the guys into the void, but I made it through and could finally face Firefly. I was definitely scared of this fight. I've never been very good at dodging Firefly's attacks, and knew that letting too many hit me would be a death sentence. But, much like Copperhead, I had an unorthodox strategy at the ready, and it once again involved the worst gadget in the game. Yep, the Concussion Detonator is also useful against Firefly, because it can be used to instantly stun him, allowing you to rack up free damage with at least 9 Batarangs and the Back Claw. If you can actually get it to land on him, you won't have to deal with his attacks and can rack up tons of free damage without ever having to worry about dying. That got me through the first phase almost unscathed. During the running section, I had a bit of a scare when I missed my jump, but the game was thankfully generous and let me move on to phase 2, which played out very similarly. Just keep spamming gadgets and you'll eventually win. It made me much more confident in the event I'd have to fight him again because I still had a ton of health when I beat him. This led us back to the Batcave where we revive Alfred, watch a long unskippable cutscene, and can move on to the finale. It's time for the fifth and final roadblock of this challenge the entire Blackgate finale. Blackgate is a constant onslaught of difficult combat encounters and close calls that are sure to make you reconsider living. And we see just what we're in for right at the front gate. This is the first of many difficult combat encounters we're going to have constantly thrown at us. We get a bit of a reprieve in the sewers, but that doesn't mean we're safe. If we land in this electrified water at all, it's an instant game over, so I needed to take this section as carefully as I could. No speedrun strats. I did so, and after a bit of glue surfing, made it to the final Predator section. But 
this one's basically a gimme. There are only regular enemies here, and I can just constantly throw batarangs from the gargoyles to knock them off the top platforms, or use the remote claw tether to string them up. No armored guys to worry about here, so it is a complete freebie. What isn't a freebie are the next three combat sections. Okay, well, one of them is, since it's only a couple regular guys who I can take out with a multi-ground takedown. But the next... Who oh boy! You've got upwards of 20 enemies with martial artists and armor guys aplenty. Every single weapon type in the game, and a brute who drops in halfway. You've got to get the shock gloves immediately to have even a chance at dealing with all of this chaos. I was barely able to scrape by with a sliver of health, but my worries were not over yet. I still had one more before I could fight Bane. This one has a brute already in the area, two venom thugs, multiple armored and ninja guys, and a bunch of weapons just lying on the ground because they feel like it. This is by far the hardest regular combat encounter in the game. I was constantly pinballed around and grabbed by the big guys, making me lose half my health incredibly quickly. But I was eventually able to make it through when I got the shock gloves active. I was not dying this close to Bane. And I was right, because I was dying at Bane. You will fight me with all your resolve, or you will die. Someone, Someone is going to die. You, me, or the clown. The question of which one it is, is in your hands. Little did I know how apt that line would be. I went into this fight incredibly cocky. This fight is easier than the hotel one. I knew this fight was easier than the hotel bout earlier, but that shouldn't have made me so confident because it is indeed still very hard. I was able to make it through the first phase unscathed, but the second would prove to be my downfall. All right, hard part's over. The rest of this is practically free. I ended up getting wombo comboed into oblivion, losing so much of my health because I just couldn't be bothered to take out the regular thugs. And when I was one attack away from taking Bane down, the unthinkable happened. Just gonna run away. Run away. No. Game. Game. Let me do things. Let me do things. No! What? What the fuck was that? Hit me! Hello? <sighs> You've got to be shitting me. What hit me? I thought I could take another hit. I thought I could go down a little bit more health and be perfectly fine. So you can imagine the shock and disappointment on my face when I realized that that wasn't the case. I dodged the tiniest bit too early and lost the rest of my health to the shockwave. After that devastating loss, I needed a break. So I called the stream for the day and decided to pick it up tomorrow. It was at this point that I was getting really tired. Three days in a row of the exact same game was getting really draining and my hopes were starting to dwindle, to the point that I finally put up a death counter, expecting myself to lose a good number of times after this. Little did I know that this would be the best run of my life. I played almost every section absolutely perfectly. I was able to get through even the toughest of roadblocks with very little effort. Even the mighty Hotel Bane only took half of my health, a far cry from previous runs. The only point I was even close to dying was against these guys on the bridge, because they're just plain mean. I was able to play it safe though and could continue on. In fact, this run had more glitches than close calls, so I'll go ahead and show some of them off for you right now. Without the shock gloves, they're basically I Oh! It's stuck in detective mode again! It did it again! It didn't do it at first, it did it again! How did that happen? How does that happen? How does that happen twice in a row now and I've never seen it before? They're not going to be close enough to those. Damn it. Oh! 
Never mind, I have. I survived the explosion. I need to hurry before he kills Sionis. So, how did that second guy go down? What? Like, I understand this one getting hit, but like, how? Oh, Faylock, thanks for the super chat. Favorite Batman movie is, uh, where am I? Where am I? What's going on? Where am I? Uh, um, I'm like, okay, that scared me. I was like falling into the void, I think. And now I don't have sound effects. Okay, uh, this is happening now. I don't know why this is happening, but it is. And I don't like that. Origins being origins, you'll love to see it. Is that it? The, the, oh my god! Look at this! Holy crap! I've never seen that before! That is so cool! That is so cool! Like, that gives insight onto how it works, too. That is really cool. Okay, so that that actually tells me a lot about the scene works. I've really, I've wondered how they did the camera scene during this part. So that's really cool. So they just leave the helicopter behind, put a filter over your screen, put, like, put the camera up there where the crack is, put a filter over the screen, and then do that gunshot there to simulate the camera being broken. That is so cool! Origins being origins, man. That is awesome! Sound effects are kind of, uh... Okay, yeah, sound effects are kind of broken right now. Uh, I'll see what happens when I go into this room. Let's see. I see the Joker's men here have been eliminated. Uh, I, I don't think I can go into... But remember, I can't go into detective mode. The must what the hell, dude? Uh, sound gone, apparently. <laughs> okay, we've got a little bit of fire going in the background. <laughs> no. No. The game crashed. The game crashed. Oh my god, it... The Xbox menu isn't even coming up. Holy crap. This thing just full on broke. Seriously, this game is so incomplete. After four more hours of pain and suffering, I had finally made it back to Bane. This time with a much safer strategy. Rather than leave all the straggler thugs with the possibility of attacking me while I try to defeat Bane, I knew I needed to take them down but trying to do that while Bane's trying to kill me is just not possible. I needed a quick way to get them out of my hair, which is when I remembered how I beat this boss for the first time. If you can build up a combo during the Bane train, and keep it after Bane does the shockwave attack, you can use the multi grand takedown to get rid of all the enemies at once, because the shockwaves knocked all of them over, no matter how far away they are. This is very difficult to pull off because you need to build up the combo during the charge attack, but it can be done. Here, I'll show you. Man, that sound is satisfying. Sadly, I couldn't get it during the actual fight, but I was able to get most of the enemies down, which made dealing with Bane a lot easier. I knew exactly what could happen if I wasn't paying attention, so I took this fight as carefully as I could, and I was eventually able to whittle him down. <sighs> we did it, boys. 
All right. But I knew I couldn't get cocky. That was my exact downfall last time. I knew it was possible to die on TN1 Bane. Plenty of people in chat were telling me that he lost them their run. So I took this fight so incredibly slow, a canoe could have crossed the Atlantic in the time it took. But it was worth it, as I carefully took Bane's health bar to zero, made sure I didn't flub the quick time event, and could move on to the final combat encounter. It is not, it is not free yet, Banana Man. It's technically not over until I do this quick time event. I've just got to make sure that I do it. Okay, Bane down. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> in hindsight, this part of the game was a victory lap, but in the moment, my heart was still racing, knowing I could die if I missed even a single input. I was able to work with Gordon perfectly to take down that last wave of enemies. And now it was just down to me and Joker. There were three more counters I needed to land before I could call time, so I spammed the first one rather than listen to anything Joker had to say, then waited oh so patiently for the last two to come up. I landed them and engaged in the most satisfying beatdown of my life. Over 100 X presses later, I had done it. Let's. I am the knight. Let's fucking go. I had become the knight. I had beaten I am the knight in Batman Arkham Origins without resetting. Thank you to everyone who joined me on this incredible journey, and especially those cheering me on in chat. If you'd like to see some of my challenges played in real time, check out my streams right here on YouTube. If you don't and just want to see the finished product, make sure you do all the YouTube stuff, because I am the knight. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.